I think this is extremely important. Uh, we know this already uh, out of the cohorts with Claudicans, but even this cost effectiveness aspect in the CLTI cohort is even more important. If you can reduce amputation rates, if you can reduce reintervention rates, and at the same time you know you realize out of this uh, paper that in Germany they save 500 euro, in uh, the Netherlands they save thousand euro by one treatment, then you know how important cost effectiveness is in this specific cohort of patients. The adoption of DCB use is of course influenced by a lot of uh, factors and I think that the health economical factors besides efficacy and safety are extremely important. Again, especially in this CLTI cohort, we know that the costs of reintervention, the cost of rehabilitation post-amputation is extremely important. So um, CLTI, even more important cost effectiveness data. The data will not completely change um, the strategy treating CLTI patients because um, the data from what the cost effectiveness analysis had been coming from are coming from femoropopletal interventions only. And this is only a part of the patient population which is suffering from critical limb ischemia. The majority has outflow disease, meaning TPL disease. Nevertheless, the data are important um, with regard to patients that have mainly multi-level femoropopletal disease in order to really prove that this proven treatment in terms of efficacy, meaning long-term outcome, long-term patency, long-term freedom from reintervention. Um, keep in mind that freedom from reintervention at five years in the Impact Global study was almost 70%. So um, that this technical efficacy translates also into cost effectiveness is very much important also for the payer side. So I believe it's, it's one piece in the puzzle um, um, supporting and promoting DCB use, but it's not the major breakthrough for that. We would need also data for below the knee interventions with uh, uh, paclitaxel coated devices. In my opinion, um, when we discuss about what kind of technology we should use, uh, we always think, uh, you know, if it's helping us in reducing the costs for the treatment of our patients. So I think, yes, um, this is a very important um, scientific uh, uh, evidence we have right now that also in patients where there are wounds, uh, when we use a drug-coated technology, um, it's reducing the mortality, the amputation rate, and it's not. We don't. We, we, we do. We don't have to fear that it's causing any harm in our patients with wounds, and that it also reduces the cost. Therefore, because it reduces the cost for amputation, and uh, uh, yeah, and amputation is is, is a highly costly uh, event in, in in such a patient. It's not only the amputation which creates costs all the follow-up of these patients because the patients if they are amputated they change from somebody who is mobile to somebody who is not mobile anymore who needs daily care and this also increases the cost so I think it's very important to have all this data collected that bacteductal coated devices drug coated technology are safe in patients with wounds and I think this is the most important this is the most important uh, uh, outcome of this of this publication. Regarding the uh, the, the data that appeared uh, about the cost effectiveness of the impact in patients with critical limb ischemia, I believe that uh, this can be uh, another uh, important information and another important uh, tool that we can have for critical limb ischemia patient. Uh, we know <clears throat> very well uh, that the drug loading balloon for SFA and POP demonstrated a uh, uh, very good result uh, and uh, uh, this result uh, 
uh, are uh, over the over time because we have uh, uh, many data about uh, five years uh, showing uh, that even uh, in critical limb ischemia there is uh, a good result satisfactory result in terms of palency we don't have any more concern uh, uh, personally i, I haven't uh, had uh, even before but now uh, we have vital status uh, data about mortality and safety of uh, paclitaxel so this is a second piece of information very important for us now we uh, are <clears throat> having another important the this cost effectiveness i think for the global health system is important any new technology to be affordable in terms of economics and uh, having uh, information that uh, the a new technology that is efficient and, uh, and safe is a cost effectiveness i think should be considered as a great information for physician for patient for physician for providers for hospital for our health system in in different countries so this should facilitate in a, in a way the adoption and the increasing number of the use of the drug in balloon also in this very complicated subset of patients that are the critical limb ischemia patient i think it definitely will um, we have safety data, we have efficacy data, and now we have also this health economical data. So, of course, this is seen as a standard of care for me to treat FEMPOP disease in the CLT high uh, cohorts. Of course, um, we also need, we know that there is no class effect. So every drug code balloon stands on its own data, and we need more head-to-head -head randomized control data to be sure that this is the drug code balloon to go or if there are also other players on the market. We are talking here about femoropopletee lesions. Um, patients with CLTI, they have multi-level disease. But as long as inflow disease treatment in this patient population is concerned, um, the impact atmol balloon definitely shows efficacy on long term. That's important because um, in particular inflow is something that also affects amputation-free survival. It's not only the treatment of tibial artery disease, so preservation of inflow is, is important. Considering this aspect, Impact Admiral will play a major role in the treatment of such kind of lesions. But as mentioned, we are talking here about inflow treatment and we are not uh, talking about what's going on below the knee. Uh, in my opinion, in, a, in any way, uh, because it uh, helps us to um, get away from the fear that we do any harm with the drug coated, bacchidoxyl coated technology in patients with wounds, because we still have that in our mind from different um, publications. And I think this is reassuring us in our daily practice. And therefore, uh, if I now have to um, have any argument with my hospital administration, financial department about bringing a drug coded technology in for patients with CLI uh, treatment, they would say, now we have the evidence that it's cost effective. And this is what the hospital administration wants to see, just numbers. And if you can show that the number is lower than the comparator, it's always good. I'm a, a physician, I'm non, uh, an economist. Uh, so I should answer first uh, telling uh, that if uh, a technology is safe and effective, should be adopted as first line treatment. We know that uh, this population of patients, the clinical ischemia is very difficult because they have a mortality rate very high, because they have uh, many, many comorbidities. And we know that uh, uh, to obtain limb salvage is an important step uh, to keep the patient alive. So uh, if we have a technique uh, that uh, make the patient, uh, that, that, that produce for, uh, for the patient an advantage in terms of limb salvage, means that this patient will walk first, but much more important, uh, will die less in the uh, over time in the next one two three years because we know that the mortality in a short period of time of patient with uh, critical limb ischemia is very is very high. So the just the the, the answer uh, would be uh, created on the safety and the efficacy. 
we have uh, figures, yes, we know from the, the, the literature data uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, efficacy in uh, FAMPOP also in rather for four and five population. Is safe? The answer is again, yes, it's safe. There is no mortality signal. The third is, uh, uh, can we afford as community, as a uh, uh, health system, uh, this technology? We will save money or not? We will spend more or not? If we, uh, on top of safety and figures, can also save money, I should say that this should be adopted as first-line uh, technique and technology for this subset of patients.